Hi, today I'm going to show you how to install a LibreWave sample library on a Mac. So I'm using uh, MacOS Mojave and this is my account page. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to orders and I'm going to find the order that I want. You can also go to the downloads page as well, but I'm going through the orders page and here it lists the downloads of this particular order and the product here is Casbeck. So over on the right are all the downloadable files associated with this product. These top three are installer files for different operating systems. So this is the Mac one, so I'm going to download that. And this one down here is the sample, so I'll download that as well. Now, if you've purchased another product, you may have more sample files. For example, with Sophia Woodwinds, there are nine different parts to the samples. So it's important that you make sure to download all of the sample files for the product you're installing. So now I'm in my downloads folder. We have the installer file and the samples. These sample files are not the actual samples. They're an archive format that's used for installing the samples. So we've got to go through an installation process separately for the samples, but it's really simple and we'll look at that in a moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is install the software by opening the uh, .pkg installer. So just double click to open that. Now it's going to say it can't be open because it's from an unidentified developer. It's just a security precaution. You may not get this depending on your security settings, but just hit OK. And then open the spotlight search and type in security. And this is the one you want, security and privacy. So just open that up and click this option open anywhere. It might be slightly different depending on your version of macros and then hit open. And now the installer file will be open. Then we can close security and privacy. Here it is down here, bouncing away. So we can hit continue here and we'll just click that. Here's the license file. I'm sure you'll enjoy reading that. Hit continue. We'll agree to the license. And I was just scanning the hard drives to uh, work out where it can possibly install this. Okay, and it's chosen the main hard drive for the installation and this is probably the best place for it. So we'll just leave it on there. You can click to customize the installation with this particular product. You have an AU plugin, a standalone application and a VST. I'm going to install them all. So I'll just hit standard install and now click install. and the installation was a success. It says, do we want to move the installer to the trash? Well, we're finished with it, so we might as well. Okay, so now we're just left with this sample file. So we've installed the software, but we still have to install the audio samples. So what we have to do is we have to run the plugin or the standalone application to install the sample. So I'm gonna run the standalone application. So I'll open the spotlight search again. I'm just gonna type in Casbeck. Now this is the standalone application. Not all products will have a standalone application. So for those, you can just run the plugin and you'll get exactly the same screen. So let's just minimize that. So it's asking, do we want to install the samples or do we want to choose a sample folder? Now we haven't installed the samples before, so we must click install samples. If you're upgrading from a previous install, then you can choose the second option. But if this is the first time install, make sure you click install samples. And now it's asking us to select that HR1 file. So we'll go to downloads and there it is. And now it's asking where would we like to install the samples? I'm actually going to go to the desktop and create a new folder there. We'll call it Casbeck samples and hit create. Now the sample installer interface pops up. It's actually quite simple. This first box here is the sample archive, the HR1 file. We've already told it where that is. This is the sample folder. This is where we're going to extract them to on the desktop over here. Here we can choose the bit rate, which is basically 16 bits or 24 bits. This option will overwrite any existing samples if you've installed this product before. Generally, you just want to leave this on default as overwrite if newer. 
and finally this option delete sample archive after extraction when this is set to no nothing will happen after sample extraction but if you set this to yes then the hr1 file will automatically be deleted after the extraction is completed i'm going to leave that on no i'm going to click ok and the extraction process will start So that took less than 10 seconds, the samples have been, it says imported successfully, and I'll hit OK on that. Now it said the sample directory does not exist, just click ignore, you don't have to worry about that, but when you play the instrument you're not going to hear any sound. Don't panic, that's how it's meant to be. You've got to close the instrument first, and then reopen it. So just for variety, I'm going to launch it as a plugin in Reaper now. So Reaper should have found the plugin automatically and there'll be an AU version, there it is, AUI, and there'll also be a VSTI version. It doesn't matter which one you use for this, so I'm just going to hit OK. And we've got the VST version loaded up. And now uh, you're not actually going to hear any sound just because of the way I'm recording this, but if you watch the meters on Reaper, you'll, um, you'll see them bounce up with audio when I play the uh, keyboard. So that means the samples have uh, now loaded successfully. Okay, now let me show you what happens if you move the samples to a new location. So I'm just going to close Reaper down here. And let's move the samples themselves to the download folder. So the samples are no longer on the desktop, so the plugin isn't going to be able to find them. So let's load up Reaper again, and this will be true for the standalone version as well. I'm just demonstrating in the plugin because that's where I think most people are going to be using this. So again, we can load the AU or the VST, it doesn't matter. So I hit OK, and now it's saying the sample directory does not exist. So it can't find the samples. If I hit ignore and I play on the keyboard, we won't see anything on the meters because it can't find the samples. So what you can do, and this will vary depending on which library you're using, but you need to go to the settings tab. So the, where, that, where the settings button is located will be what varies. And then you need to click this button, which doesn't show up very well in this particular library, but it says change sample folder location. And you can see where it's currently expecting the samples to be, which is on the desktop. So we'll change the location. And we'll redirect it to the downloads folder. And we'll hit OK. And this time actually says you need to reload the plugin to complete this step. So we're going to close the plugin. We're going to remove it from here. And we'll re add it. And now play on the keyboard. And again, the meters move. So if you're playing on the keyboard and you don't see anything moving on the meters, that means most likely that the plugin can't find the samples. So just come in here and check the sample location. So I'm going to close Reaper again and I want to show you one last thing. So if everything goes horribly wrong and you haven't installed the samples, let's remove the samples completely. But you've still got the HR1 file and you want to just sort of restart the process. All you need to do is delete the config files for the product and you'll be able to start over. So the config files on Mac are located in a hidden library folder. So let me show you how to get to that. So if we go to the Go menu up here, and we don't see library in there. Now if you hold Alt on your keyboard when you click the Go menu, you'll actually get the option to open the library folder. So you must be holding Alt on your keyboard for this to show up. So click on that. And then you need to go to Application Support and scroll down until you see LibreWave. Here's LibreWave. And then inside the LibreWave folder, you'll have one folder for each LibreWave product you've installed. So this is the one for Casbeck. Now you can delete the entire Casbeck folder and then it will just be as if you've only installed the software and you'll get the prompt to install the samples again. Or if you wanna be more specific, for example, if you don't want to delete your user presets, if you've set up some presets, you can just delete this link OS file so let me just move that one to the trash. And now we'll load up the plugin again in Reaper and we'll get the original prompt to install the samples. 
So this is just as if we've done a fresh install and we're resetting. There we go, and we're back to where we were. So just remember, you can delete the config files if everything goes wrong and start over. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Let me know if you've got any questions or comments, and I'll see you next time.